Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly caulk your walls when you're building a soundproof wall. Now, this is something that, to be honest, I was a little confused about back when I was building my studio, and now, having done tons of research and helping out clients uh, through my own consulting, I've found a system that I like. And so I'm going to share that with you today about how to actually seal those walls up so no sound will come through. Before we jump in, I have a special resource for you guys. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It goes through the entire process of how I would design and build a soundproof studio. So if you're interested in skipping all the BS and going straight to the good stuff, check out that soundproofing workshop. You can watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. All right, enough of me blabbing. Let's jump into this video on how to properly caulk your soundproof wall. Okay, so you may have heard that there's something called acoustic caulk or acoustic sealant, same exact thing. And it is different than the normal caulking that you would find in your neighborhood uh, hardware store. So stay away from anything that's meant for just normal caulking like silicone as well. Stay away from all that stuff. You might wanna save money but it is not what you need. And let me tell you why. So acoustic caulk is formulated so that when it dries, it doesn't fully harden and it has some flexibility in it. This flexibility means that it will help reduce the amount of um, sound that can transfer from one surface to another a little bit. But most importantly, uh, overall, it will make sure that your acoustic seal does not crack over the long term, whereas regular sealants, regular caulking will crack over time and lead to sound leakage coming through those cracks and holes and big problems in your soundproof system. So spend the extra money and buy the right acoustic caulk. So the next question you may have is, well, which one should I buy, Wilson? Like there's so many on the market and some dude on the internet said, never use this one because it's horrible. Should you believe them? I mean, okay, I'll simplify this for you. So in my home studio, I used the Green Glue Soundproofing Acoustic Sealant. This is not, I repeat, this is not the Green Glue Acoustic Compound, which comes in the green pail and is green and sticky and you use it on the back of drywall. Completely different, so don't make the mistake. You can use that. I have heard from some people that they don't like it. Um, it's, to me, it works just fine for my studio, it was great. Some other companies that you can check into, do some research on are TMS Acoustic Caulk, RLX Acoustics Stop Gap Acoustic Sealant, and Tremco Acoustic Sealant. Now there's more out there, but I like to work in threes. I think those, maybe those three or four, I don't know. But keep it narrow. Uh, at the end of the day, I'll be honest, I would probably just go with the cheapest of the ones I just mentioned. Um, if it says it's acoustic sealant, if it's been tested, you can really get nitty gritty and look at the ASTMC regulations and codes and see if it meets that, blah, blah, blah. Or you could just buy it and you'll be good. But just make sure it's acoustic caulk, not regular caulk. All right, now let's talk about how you should apply this acoustic caulking to your soundproof wall. We're gonna start with the bottom plate. For those of you who don't know, the bottom plate is the piece of wood on the bottom of your framing that sits on your floor. If you're framing directly on concrete like I did, a lot of times it's called the, the sill plate as well. So either way, it's okay. For this uh, situation, we're gonna be talking about that bottom piece of wood. Now, if you look at this diagram here from the soundproofing company, they will say that it's best to place acoustic sealant on the right side, the middle, and the left side of that bottom plate or multiple bottom plates if you're doing the double wall system, and then also to place acoustic sealant underneath the first and second layer of drywall. Now you might be saying, holy cow, that's a lot of sealant, and you would be right. And I would say this is the best case scenario to do this, to seal up everything. The reason of doing three lines is that if you make a slight mistake, there's still a whole nother line of acoustic sealant that will stop the sound. So this is more for human air than it is for like, whoa, that's just like a ton of acoustic caulk. I will say in my studio, we didn't do this. I didn't put acoustic sealant underneath the bottom sill plate. What we used was something called a multi-use rigid gasket plate. I know there's one at Home Depot right now from Owens Corning. It's basically like a foam, squishy, almost like backer rod material. 
It's five inches wide, so it goes underneath your bottom sill plate, and this will help protect against moisture. So depending on if you're building on concrete like I did, talk to your contractor to see if moisture could be an issue. Regardless, it kind of helps put another barrier between your concrete and your wood sill plate or bottom plate. Don't ask me if that will help with soundproofing. I imagine it would. It hasn't been lab tested. I don't really know, but you know, it could be good. So what you could do is throw acoustic sealant underneath that uh, protected barrier as well. It's really up to you. I'm just telling you what's the best practice from my own research and experience. So, all right, let's go on to the next th thing that I want to talk about, which is should you leave a gap between your drywall and your floor? There's a lot of people out there that say leaving a gap between the perimeter of your soundproof wall is a good idea. And I will tell you right now that yes, that could be a good idea or it could be not really necessary. It depends. So for my studio, for example, we had a, a standalone structure in my backyard with a concrete slab. I wasn't too worried about sound coming from the ground up through the concrete and up into my inside walls. Therefore, we had the inside walls touch the concrete and then we ran acoustic sealant over the last layer of drywall. Some of you might be like, oh my God, he did it wrong. And maybe I did, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. The room is perfectly soundproof and it works great. However, if I could do it again, sure. I would try doing this. What Roger Weiss recommends and also RH Brandt, they're both respected, I'm going to say colleagues of mine in the soundproofing field. Uh, and they recommend leaving a quarter inch to three eighths inch air gap. I know, sounds crazy, right? Underneath the drywall, the two layers of drywall, and then taking backer rod, which is like a foamy um, substance you can look up online, but it's a, a common construction material. And you put the backer rod underneath the two layers of drywall and fill it with acoustic caulk. And this will create an airtight seal. It will also decouple your inside layers of drywall from the floor, meaning that sound that might be vibrating on your floor from like a room below or from a side room to the side, it won't as easily transfer into the drywall, hypothetically. So yes, you can do this if you are worried about flanking noise, meaning noise traveling from one room to the other under a shared floor. And in that case, I would recommend doing this. Uh, even if you're on a concrete slab in a basement and you have like kids in the den next door watching movies while you're trying to record, yeah, raise that drywall up a little bit, put the backer rod in, acoustic caulk it, seal it up, you should be good to go. All right, now let's talk about the next thing, which would be your corners. So when we have our perimeter of our wall, we're just gonna imagine we have the floor perimeter, then we have the two corners on the side of our wall where uh, two walls meet. And here is another place where you can leave that same gap. So for my, uh, it's again, it's gonna be a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. That's six to nine millimeters for all of you not using this dang imperial system. Um, and you can put backer rod in there. So you'd put your first layer of drywall in, leave that little gap, put the backer rod in, put the acoustic sealant, acoustic caulk down the whole length of that corner, layer your second layer of drywall on, leave a little gap, put another layer, thing of backer rod, put another line of acoustic caulk down there, and you'll be good to go. Your two walls will not actually be touching then technically, and it will help reduce vibrations that would come from one wall to the other in your corners. Another good thing you can do. Did we do it in my studio? No, again, we didn't, we didn't, we just didn't do it in my studio and it's okay. I think it's okay. I think I'll survive. Okay, lastly, what about leaving a gap between your walls and your ceiling? Yes, I do think that for most people, uh, this is a great idea. Again, did I do it in my studio? No, I just didn't do it, but it's okay. It still works well. It works really well. But if I was going to build it again, would I do this? Yes. I think unless I had a standalone, what I call independently framed ceiling, this means building your ceiling off the inside wall of a double wall system, meaning that that frame for that ceiling is not touching anything else in the structure. So it's totally isolated. If I'm doing that independently framed ceiling, I don't think you need to leave the gap. You can just have your ceiling and your walls touching because everything's isolated. But if you're using hat channels, if you're using like uh, any sort of hanging system for your, for your ceiling, then it's still technically connected. And I think it's a good idea to reduce vibrations that could travel through from your ceiling to your walls by leaving that same air gap. Remember, that's a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch or six to nine millimeters for those of you 
rest of the people in the world. And uh, so what you do is the same thing. You're just going to leave that gap on your first layer of drywall and put the, the ceiling down, leave the gap, put the backer rod and the acoustic ceiling in. Then you're gonna hang your second layer of drywall on the ceiling and the wall, leave that gap again, put the backer rod and acoustic sealant in that gap, seal it up, and you are good to go. So it's not too hard. I think that ultimately, just leaving a little bit of a gap around all the perimeters and putting a backer rod and acoustic caulk in there is a great way to go for most designs. So in conclusion, you've learned that you definitely need to use acoustic caulk, acoustic sealant. Don't use noise proofing sound compound, whatever that is, green glue. Don't use the actual green glue. Use the acoustic sealant if you're going to go the green glue route. You can use those other companies I recommended or any company that you find on the internet that says they are using acoustic sealant and it will help with actually that non-hardening acoustic caulk. And then we learned that we want to place it underneath our bottom plate or bottom or our sill plate if we're framing off of the concrete foundation. And we also know that we want to leave some gaps around the perimeter of our wall for most cases and put that backer rod and acoustic clock around that so that sound just won't be transferring through our walls into our room and from the ceiling into our walls. So I hope this was helpful, guys. Let me know in the comments if you have questions. I try to get to them when I have the time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all in another video. Before I jump off this lesson, I want to say that I do have that free soundproofing workshop. You can go to it at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys about this wonderful topic of acoustic sealant, acoustic caulk. And uh, I'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. All right. See ya.